on Billboard tonight, legendary saxophonist Snake Davis, festivals in full swing and Matt Damon in full review. Welcome to Billboard with me, Ted Stanley, for our monthly roundup of arts and entertainment in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. With the lifting of COVID restrictions, theatres are opening their doors again and summer entertainment is springing up around the region. Harold Pinter's early masterpiece, The Dumb Waiter, plays at the East Riding Theatre in Beverley from the 9th to the 25th of September. John Hewis, summer pantomime, Mother Goose, is at the Riverhead Theatre in Louth from the 27th to the 29th of August. And Gordon Steele's The False Boys, directed by Pam Reynolds, runs from the 4th to the 11th of September at the Caxton Theatre in Grimsby. The Freedom Festival in Hull returns with a full programme of events from the 20th of August to the 4th of September. Seaside Sparkle sees firework displays on the beach at Skegness and Mablethorpe throughout August and September. And the Zero Degrees Festival, a celebration of theatre, music, dance and comedy, is taking place over the summer months in the historic town of Louth. This year's events include Rhubarb Theatre on the 30th of August, World Music Day on the 4th of September, and Sunday Cafe Culture in the Corn Market on the 19th of September. Full details from the festival website. And finally, the multi-award winning Festival of the Sky returns to Cleethorpes in September with the Twilight Hour, a spectacular outdoor show for all the family presented by one of the UK's most ambitious and creative performance art companies, Very Plum. The Twilight Hour is at the Moodian Centre on the 24th and 25th of September. Returning from the southern coast of Spain to the east coast of England, journalist and broadcaster Hugh Richards is pleased to see his friends again, but missing his tappers. Thanks, Ted. Very good to be back now the world is opening up again. But still good to stay home with a good read, which is what Stephen King provides with Billy Summers, we usually know what kinds of thrills and fears to expect from King, perhaps the most consistently high-selling writer in English. His latest is a surprise. No real horror nor supernatural intervention. It is much more a crime thriller. The named protagonist is an expert assassin, but he only kills bad people, which for King gives him moral authority. Of course, he wants to retire, and of course, he must pull off one last job. King never fails to grip his readers. Here, with no monsters or ghosts, the joy is in the small town America our hero crosses and King clearly loves. How to Kill Your Family, something we've all wondered, is a funny, clever and mischievous novel from Bella Mackey. It reminded me of Kind Hearts and Coronets in that the murderess tells her story as a confession written in prison. The reasons for her incarceration are not as obvious as they seem, and her family deserved it. This is a great thriller and a good laugh for late summer, and it proves its own point that we all seem to be fascinated by murder in the home, where Alfred Hitchcock said it belongs. If you're too young to remember Echo and the Bunnymen, bad luck, and make it better by listening to one of the great indie bands of the 1970s and 1980s. Guitarist Will Sargent's memoir, Bunny Man, tells his story of grim poverty in the 60s and 70s in Liverpool, the inspiring arrival of punk, reel-to-reel -reel recordings in the back room of a council house, and after the usual rock stories of collaboration, betrayal and creative tension, success with one of the most influential British bands of their day. Echo and the Bunny Men is still going with flexible lineups. This book will make you want to hear them and revisit the old songs. When you think of cities full of sin and intrigue, financial devilry, liberalism and lust, espionage and economic innovation, seafaring adventure and political asylum, you might not think of the rather staid Belgian city of Antwerp. Back in the 16th century, this city was a much more fascinating town, seething with innovation and treachery, a banking capital and a political experiment. 
Michael Pye's book, Antwerp, The Glory Years, reveals a fascinating tale of an independent city-state free of the religious, feudal and cultural restraints suffered by the rest of Renaissance and Reformation Europe. Antwerp offers an optimistic, sometimes sinister vision of a maverick community and, naturally, chips and mayonnaise. Back to you, Ted. Thank you, Hugh, and welcome back to Blighty. Legendary saxophonist Snake Davis has played and toured with some of the top performers in the world, as well as entertaining us in more intimate settings in his home county of Lincolnshire. I caught up with him earlier to find out more about his successful career, life during lockdown, and the inspiration for his latest single. grew up in South Wales where of course singing is uh, of paramount importance and uh, at the age of six or seven I was found to have a sweet voice. Soon after that I joined the church choir as well as being in the school choir and doing little solos and it just gave me a special feeling that, that carried on from there and one thing led to another. Singing, piano classical lessons, guitar self-taught, tried the trumpet, picked the flute up in my at the age of 17 or 18 but it wasn't loud enough and I couldn't cut through and I wanted to play with guitarists and things so light bulb went on sax age 18. My number one hero is a fellow called King Curtis and he was such a soulful cat and then through the sax I discovered the jazz greats and they became influences as well but it was the soul men that got me. The sound, the tone is the most important and having my own unique voice being instantly recognisable, whether it was on a quick fit jingle or a radio ident. I mean, my sax playing is my new singing voice from when my voice broke, that's what I worked out. How do you get your own sound? That is a big, wide, deep question and we can spend weeks in workshops and study groups talking about it. And I still don't fully understand it. I just know, or I believe that if you spread your influences wide, listen to lots of people and think and listen to your sound and spend lots of time on tone exercise, it'll, it'll come if you're lucky. It was quite simple for me in the beginning, I just wanted to get really good on the sax and be in a band. Those are the only two things, I didn't really have any considerations about money or fame or fortune. Session playing was not on the radar. But then through doing lots and lots of gigs, you know, in clubs and university bars, you just start to meet more and more people, more and more players, different musicians. One time I was playing a band on the wall in Manchester, a lovely club, and uh, a keyboard player who I'd hired just for that night because the other guy wasn't available said, I do um, quite a lot of work with Granada Television. He said, um, how do you fancy coming along and playing on, uh, you know, some of the music I'm doing for this programme called Behind the Bike Sheds? And I went, oh, it sounds like fun. And then I found out it was quite a lot more money than you got for playing in a pub and off I went and then one thing led to another and more people got to know me and got to know about me and I started being invited to play on people's records first in Manchester and then down in London and at times I worried that you know playing on commercial things would sort of hurt my soul and you know muddy the waters but actually every new job presents a challenge and calls on different skills and it's all doing you good. But one of the biggest was definitely meeting Lisa Stansfield. And so we were all friends and, and when she became famous and started having hits, she took me with her and that was my first world tour. It was my first Top of the Pops. And being on the tube, Jules Holland and Paula Yates, that was a big one. Quite a big time London producer spotted that and started inviting me to London for sessions. So it just happened organically and fairly naturally, meeting people and, and uh, being invited into the studio and onto people's records. <laughs> Joseph Davis Hare, my youngster, he's turned 18, he's had two lockdown birthdays and he enabled me to become a live streamer and so within 10, 12 days of being locked down we were in the studio there live streaming to you know, 100 people or so. 
of just about every weekend. I've done 150 shows live stream from the studio. <laughs> First of all, it felt uncomfortable, a little bit alien. But then I found, you know, people are chatting to me and they're sending messages. It's not so immediate, but they really appreciated it. And I felt useful and it got me up in the morning and made me want to practice. And we just mentioned uh, young J.D.H. Hare, Joseph Davis Hare. As his 18th birthday was coming up, I thought, well, I feel a new piece coming on. I've played on a lot of dancey EDM, electronic dance music type records for Calvin Harris, Klingander, Fowl, but I've never produced anything like that myself. So I, th I thought I'll have a go and produced that track and thought it was worthy of a release and worthy of being uh, dedicated to the young man who'd made all those live streams happen really. <laughs> Well, it's the process of easing back into live live, in real life. So far, just my own projects and just the UK. But I'm really happy cracking on and getting into my own projects again. And you know, you can, folks can come straight to my website, snakedavis.rocks, there's a contact there. I'm eminently contactable. Snake Davis is just one of the local artists on a new online platform that will showcase some of the best musicians and music venues on the East Coast. If you're planning a private event or booking for some great entertainment for your festival or music venue, you can meet the artists, watch the videos and book the band right here. Three of the leading care providers in North East Lincolnshire have joined together to offer a complete range of services for those in later life. Three organisations who deal with older people are all coming together to offer a holistic service where older people can get whatever they need. We've formed it so that we are working together, serving the community and we all have the same aims. I think the benefits are that the older person gets a, a wider choice and, and also it's, it's about wider reach. The new Later Life Partnership provides a full range of services and support to help you maintain your independence and make the most of Later Life. Coming up on tonight's show, an exciting new songwriter emerges from the Creative Connections competition and record viewing figures for the new Heritage Channel. But first, here's actress Liz Drury with our review of the latest film releases. Heroic pups on Paw Patrol, a cat and mouse game between contract killers in Protégé, and the transforming power of love in Harry McQueen's Supernova. But first, Stillwater, starring Matt Damon as unemployed roughneck Bill Baker. Bill travels from Oklahoma to Marseille to visit his estranged daughter Alison, imprisoned for a murder she claimed she did not commit. Alison seizes on a new tip that could exonerate her and asks Bill to contact her legal team. But eager to prove his worth and regain his daughter's trust, Bill decides to take matters into his own hands. Stymied by language barriers, cultural differences and a complicated legal system, Bill seeks the help of French actress Virginie and together these unlikely allies embark on a journey of discovery, truth, love and liberation. Please keep a watchful eye on Alison. Amen. Police. Did you ask her to lie? I'm trying to get my little girl out of jail. That's all I give a damn about. You sound very American right now. Good, I am. Yeah, and you're also a stranger here. What did you do? You just have to trust me. 
Martin Campbell's The Protégé stars Samuel L. Jackson, Michael Keaton and Maggie Q as Anne, the world's most skilled contract killer, rescued as a child by the legendary assassin Moody and trained in the family business. When Moody is brutally killed, Anne seeks revenge, becoming entangled with an enigmatic killer in a deadly game of cat and mouse. You're intrigued by her. Curious. Give us bad manners. No. I'd really like to see you again, under different circumstances. These are the best circumstances you'll ever see me in. In the stillness and silence between them, Colin Firth and Stanley Tutti craft indelible portraits of affection and grief in Harry McQueen's Supernova, suggesting the invisible but unbreakable ties that bind them together. Sam and Tusker travel across the English countryside to their nominal destination, a comeback concert for classical pianist Sam, and their purpose, a farewell tour for Tusker, who's beset by early onset dementia. Barely suppressed anguish and fear are kept at bay as they explore how the tragedy and triumph of love in our lives shines most brightly before burning out, touching and transforming those left behind. It's not about fair, it's about love. No, Sam. I want to see this through with you to the end. Hey, you know, a very wise man once said, we will not starve for lack of wonders, but from lack of wonder. In our family movie tonight, the Paw Patrol take on their biggest rival, Humdinger. As the new mayor of nearby Adventure City, Humdinger starts wreaking havoc, it's up to Ryder and our heroic pups to face the challenge head on. Armed with exciting gadgets and a new ally, the savvy Dash and Liberty, they fight to save the citizens of this threatened neighbourhood. Gotta know how to talk to people. Now go! Let's kick the tires and fight some fires! Ride a cowboy! Motorcycle deploy! This is what we do. No cities too big, no pups too small. On DVD and Blu-ray, The Last Dance from ESPN, Ran from Studio Canal, and The Bird with the Crystal Plumage from Arrow Video are also worth a look. Thank you, Liz. In Art News, the 2021 Open Exhibition at the Ferrins Gallery in Hull is on now until the 3rd of October. There are some brilliant pieces this year. It's always incredibly professional and always impressive. It always has its own uniqueness to it, if you like. There is so much variety. You're surprised at how it, it seems to increase every year, the quality. You know, if you're an artist, if you're making something, if you're creating something, this is very personal. This is very vulnerable. So, you know, we wanted to make sure we gave everyone the time of day. I think it's a really good platform for artists to get their work on display in their local gallery. Um, it's a really good way to get their work known and shown in the local community. I think the open exhibition is very important for individual artists, local artists. So having the open exhibition is, is something that's really important. The Creative Start Collective will begin their first mural for the Paint the Town Proud project at Grimsby Town Football Club in August. And Hammond House Gallery's August exhibition, Print Run, features work by some of the leading local exponents of fine art prints, including Joe Ferguson, Paul Butler and Janet Cox. The new Heritage Channel is enjoying record viewing figures with its news, views and stories on our local history. You can watch the latest programme on the Heritage Channel Facebook group. Time now for another Billboard favourite, Kirsty Hanno with a review of some of the music you can enjoy around the region. The Engine Shed in Lincoln features Blackstone Cherry on Saturday the 11th of September and the electronic music roots of pop sensation Becky Hill on the 29th of September. Pop Live 2021 
comes to the Meridian Showground in Cleethorpes on Friday the 10th of September. And the Bonus Arena in Hull features Elbow on the 2nd of September and the punk and folk influences of Frank Turner on the 3rd. At Grimsby Central Hall, the first Friday open mic session resumes on the 3rd of September. A 15 to 20 minute performance of comedy, poetry, dance and music is rewarded by two drinks and, if you're good, lots of audience appreciation. Folk at the North Lincolnshire Museum in Scunthorpe on the 28th and 29th of August features Liz and Paul Davenport, Amanda Lowe, Mercato and yours truly, Kirsty Hanna. While sadly I roam and lament my dear home Where lads and young lasses are making the hay where the Many of our most popular artists on the Book the Band platform are performing this summer, including Yorkshire singer-songwriter Rachel McKenna, who has a packed lineup of events, including the Big Sky Beer Festival on the 28th of August and the Filey Folk Festival on the 11th of September. Watch me go, that kiss me, nothing me, nothing me. And if you really thought we could be, you really thought we could be. There's still time to submit entries for the Hammond House International Literary Prize. Awarded by the University Centre Grimsby, this prestigious writing competition offers cash prizes, worldwide publication and the televised award ceremony. Here's the lowdown on what some of the judges may be looking for. ...called Stardust. Well, I really don't know. I have any idea what that means. So if I was a judge and someone wrote something and it really inspired me and said, well, this is what stardust means, then that would be really important to me. Excellence, uh, to be entertained, to be surprised, to have that sense of waking up, which is what a good story gives you at the end when you think, ah. I'm looking for that arresting idea. I'm looking for something new and unique. I'm looking for something that shouts at me. Look at B, look at this. You can submit your short stories, poetry, scripts and songs until the 30th of September at hammondhousepublishing.com. And if you need some inspiration for the stylist theme, here's singer-songwriter Rachel McKenna and rapper Cress. You can't dream and you can't hope You shouldn't criticise And try to steal the from my own See, I was blessed with this musical skill It can help bring us together, yeah, from further afield Cause music is a weapon of power, one that we wield I got this pen as my sword and I hold the pad as my shield You can listen to the full-length versions of the theme song on the Hammond House Publishing website in other literary news, the Creative Collections Anthology, due for publication in September, showcases the talent of the young people of Grimsby who express their experience of life in lockdown through poetry, stories, painting, drawing and even songs. The winning song, written by 19-year-old Kerry Crouch, was set to music by local singer-songwriter Amy Naylor. Look out for Kerry and Amy's song playing on local radio. We'll be your light and your friend So don't you worry about a thing Now with news of more entertainment for you to enjoy around the region Here's Gemma Lingard with Box Office Cheers Ted so how do you fancy seeing out the last days of summer with some amazing live events across the region? Well, up in Bridlington, comedy superstar John Bishop begins his brand new show, which promises to be hilarious. Join him at Bridlington Spa on the 17th of September.
And get ready for the new school year at Hull New Theatre with School of Rock. Based on the iconic movie starring Jack Black, this hit musical follows a substitute teacher who turns his class into a mind-blowing rock band. See it from the 7th of September through to the 18th. Hands in. Rock on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Fancy stepping back in time to the golden era of music at the Skegness Embassy Theatre on the 2nd of September? Well, Lipstick on Your Collar takes you back to the 1950s and 60s with an evening of back-to-back -back hits from the likes of Brenda Lee, Buddy Holly, The Beatles and many more. For rock and roll fans, this is one not to miss. you can join The Fizz for an up-close and a personal evening at the New Theatre Royal. They invite you to peer behind the curtain on the 19th of September with a warts and all telling of their story from their formation to, of course, winning the Eurovision Song Contest. The Rocket Man comes to Grimsby Auditorium on the 23rd of September with I'm Still Standing, the music of Elton John. Celebrate his legendary 50-year career with all his greatest hits, performed by the outstanding Joel Buckingham and an amazing live band. Well, that's almost all for tonight's show. Don't forget to watch our new Heritage Channel and keep up to date with the latest Billboard news on our Facebook page. Or if you're watching on YouTube, click the subscribe button below. If you have a story you would like us to feature on Billboard, email details to news at billboardtv.uk. Please take care and stay safe during these challenging times. We will be back next month with more entertainment news, entertaining guests and great music.